so yeah, I think this is probably going to be quorum for tonight. Uh, sorry, it's my 7 p.m. I know it's not night for most people. Um, Tycho never responded. John said he couldn't. And we have everybody else. So yeah, all right. Um, I just emailed the TOB. Hold on, hold on. You're saying you reached out to a few people beyond the board for the call or what? Oh, I'm just saying for the doodle poll, uh, John emailed back that he couldn't do any of the time. So he would listen to the recording when he's back tomorrow. Um, and Tycho uh, never responded to the doodle poll or email. So, so we have seven of nine, basically. Um, I just put the hack MD. It looks like people mostly saw that because I see attendees typing in. Uh, Being helpful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Helpful-ish, you know. So, uh, you know, I think I think everyone knows uh, why we're here. Um, I think the, you know, the most critical item that we want to hopefully come away from this call with some agreement on is the working group proposal, which is, uh, again, linked there to a different HackMD that Derek wrote up. And uh, it looks like there's a good number of comments already there. So uh, I assume one option is to kind of walk through some of those comments. Uh, and then I know, Alexa, I don't know if you want to talk any about charter cleanup. I know you haven't had a chance to do all of that, all that you want to do there yet. And then Chris sent an email with the um, inactive maintainer kind of summary with a couple suggested items there for people that effectively aren't responding at this point. Um, and then Steve, I put your link to, you know, even though we haven't like walk through the working group proposal, proposal. I know you wanted to kind of draft up the reference type uh, working group. So that's that's there. So before yeah, we- Just for context on that one, like I, the, the thing there is we're just trying to make some progress and we're not looking to force anything into any specs, but we didn't want to go dark. We want to make sure it's as visible and public as, not, as, as possible. And it was just an example of, hey, there's a good working group proposal. We love it. You know, if we here's what we would propose, and it's really just a test case. In fact, that's why I indented it. I'm not looking for a vote on it. I'm looking. We wrote that up to see it. Does that match the expectations of what folks are trying to do with the working group, so that we can do this work very visible. Everybody can see what's going on. There's no secrets, and um, it's a test case of the proposal. Is really all we're trying to do. Yep. Yeah, great. So, um, so we have the working group draft proposal. Like I said, it looks like there's some number of comments there. Um, Derek, do you want to walk through any of this at a high level? I mean, I guess maybe a reasonable question is who spent time, you know, with this? Who, who, you know, obviously we can have a, a general you know, discussion time around it, but that's not going to be very useful if, if folks haven't uh, read through it yet. So where where are the TOB members as far as like readiness to, to sort of discuss this? Um, I read through it when it was first posted. So um, unless it's changed a lot since then, then I, I feel okay talking about it. I'm in the same boat as Alexa. Okay, great. Yeah, there hasn't been any significant changes. I, I, I wanted it to kind of stand as it is. And I think some other discussions have come up from Steve's uh, proposal, but it hasn't changed. Junior TOB member in the works over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there hasn't been any, any significant changes to it. I, I think we can discuss um, the different points of it. And then, yeah, Steve, I, th I think maybe from yours, we, we talked about a few other points that we might want to 
highlight in their specifics, but yeah, I, I think the high level hasn't changed. And I, I think, I don't think we're ready on to vote on anything today. It said like, there's like a laundry list of, of changes to the charter we want to get through first. Um, like Alexa pointed out, we don't even have a way to like version the charter today. So it's kind of uh, difficult to make any changes in it right now. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I would certainly love like to hear what everybody's take is, especially on like the high level and what details you think are missing. Um, to me, it, it, uh, one of the big takeaways was that it's, uh, I like I like the idea. It almost has a look and feel of like how uh, CNCF has kind of sandbox entry level pieces uh, for projects coming in. And uh, in that same way, like reading over it and how the working groups, you know, trying to clearly define them, themselves and what their goals are, or at least what, you know, possible success criteria might be is more or less some kind of just place to basically say, here are the working groups so that, you know, if some of these working groups are almost indistinguishable from uh, a spec itself of like, what which things are official and which things are still kind of like working groups, more or less like the, the equivalent of like a CNCF sandbox level or like actually this graduated out of a working group and it's like a, you know a thing now or it's integrated back across the spec that it was dealing with or it became its own thing um just a way to kind of denote that one one idea i have is like if if the tob could basically write down like they don't have actually have to send prs with the full charter changes if you could write down your desired kind of effects like if it's like we want working groups that potentially are areas for experimentation they may fail we also potentially want to allow the tob to approve them and become official projects i could take that and basically send it to linux foundation legal and they'll just paper it up and send it back for you just for a sanity check for you to then vote uh, upon versus you actually trying to write the explicit you know charter legalese mm. Yeah, it was a little of that trying to match the charter, but yeah. I wasn't sure if, if it was like Linux Foundation lawyers that wrote it in the first place, that, that both made sense. And Correct. It was written by a lawyer <laughs> or lawyers with lots of other lawyers reviewing it and prove it. It was a little bit painful for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what lawyers are good at though. Yeah. So, so, I mean, if the, if the, if, if the simple change is like, we want working groups similar to like sandbox projects, like I could, I could go have that requirement written down. And then if there's any other requirements, um, maybe, maybe, you know, figure those out and then I'll send it to our legal team. They'll do an update. They'll send it to you for feedback. You can make any changes if you're happy vote essentially done at, at, at that point. Um, I, I think the TOB writing the actual, explicit modifications or additions is probably not the best um, use of your time. I think yeah, that sounds pretty good. reasonable to me. Certainly on the governance thing, it, it seemed weird that each working group would have to define governance. Like if there was a, a template and if for some reason there was a deviation, we could tweak it, but it, I, I didn't know what, it seemed like I was writing something from scratch that I didn't need to. Yeah. I mean, I like Phil, I think it was Phil's idea of like, like treat it kind of like a sandbox project. They're potentially expected to fail. Sometimes they succeed and they get voted upon by the TOB as kind of from like sandbox to graduated staff, the next level, essentially. Very common open source project pattern. Yeah, and from my perspective, like there's the two things that I think I care about the most here is, is one is kind of what we're talking about, like there is a thing, like it can be, have a draft version, but there's a thing that like companies or projects can target for implementation and everybody can agree on what this thing is. Um, and even if it's not official OCI, like it's, it's something that's in one place. And like, if it's a, just a specific version of the draft, um, that at least is something that can go and spawn implementations. Um, and then the second thing, which I'm not sure is, is clarified here, but that um, for it to become kind of graduated, like it, it needs to be 
something real. And yeah, I think CNCF is is a good like there's three levels, I guess, in in yeah in CNCF I, here. I don't recommend it always. I, I'd stick with two if you can. <laughs> yeah, but I well for OCI, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have have three different levels because traditionally it's been like once something becomes a spec, like it's something that we know works because the industry's using it. And it's it's kind of a high threshold, but right now I feel like there's nothing like unless you're like uh, at a like running a massive scale project that has like a lot of power, then there's nothing you can do to like force force these projects in. So and traditionally that was pretty much only Docker that that had that level of power to get that in. So it's it's trying to like like decentralize some of that power, but at, at least that's that's my take on it. I don't know if it achieves that. I mean, we, we could say that like working groups, you know, you could bet on these things potentially, but until they're, you know, officially the graduated level, which at a minimum, maybe you could add requirements. You could potentially go the IETF route where it's like, you at least need two, you know, reference implementations or something to you, two adopters in production or, or something as, as a minimum before it could be voted upon uh, as a graduated thing. But I don't know how people feel because historically these were things that were already running um, at, at some level uh, in, in production. Yeah, I think having language in there that says that you must have production implementers of this, I think, is yeah, and along the lines of what I think it should have. Deferring to TOB's judgment, of course, yeah. Yeah, I like that. And that's the, the, the working group here. The fact that a working group gets acknowledged, whatever, how we want to call it, yeah. allows two companies, to two or more companies, to agree have something they're agreeing on because... That's the pressure we've seen from legal and engineering and so forth of, look, unless there's a spec, and I'm air quoting a spec, unless there's something that they can point at, it's very hard to go to, um, like, uh, up, up to, there's a particular vendor that uh, one of our customers that says, hey, look, we'd love to be able to use this, you know, thing and or signing. And unless that company that they're using uses it, then what do we do? It's like, well, we want to be able to point that company at this so that they can go use it. Yeah. And even though it's still an incubation, we still need to point to that something, yeah. something other than my personal repo, which of course okay. is, that's kind of the model. If, a, if there's a working group that's a, yep. approved of some sort, even a branch of something, then you can point people at it and go, like, oh, that's not Steve's personal thing. That's an official thing. It's branded working group. It's branded draft, yep. it's branded something that says it's that sandbox version of something that gets promoted and then there's enough people that are that are supporting it that you can go to the next step yeah completely uh, makes sense I, I mean i have enough I, I have enough of of that kind of written down right now that I'm, I'm happy to go take that bit to to legal to get an updated version um of, of the charter if there's anything else specifically that you want change uh we could do it but I, I prefer piecemeal changes versus trying to change a ton of things um at once i think if we just add the working group bits that doesn't block a lot of other just it just blocks work that you know people were trying to get done uh there's other small changes we could do um later on does that sound like a decent plan for for folks here I mean, that, that sounds good to me I think it'd just be whether uh, there's anything else other TOB members want to bring to legal then. I just had a question about the, the proposal just to make sure those things are just clear from, sure. uh, from my end is, so um, the goal is, is that this will basically always be a new project, right? That the working group will, will have merged. So it's not like it'll be an amendment to an existing project because the discussion of like, because the, the, the fact that you would get an RC release on, on TOB merge seems to sort of uh, assume that this is always going to be like a brand new project. Yeah, it's basically a brand new early stage project that's delineated between like an official, you know, uh, like 1.0 spec or, or whatever to, to that. Yeah, it'll be specifically designated and the pathway, the chart is like, it has to get approved by TOB to be official thing. And so I can imagine you could have like say an image spec, like what what is the next, you know, like image next generation working group, right? And go bang away at that before figuring out whether that gets potentially merged into an image spec or is a new thing. Like just as like a random example. Um, okay. 
Yeah. Right. Um, so it's one quick question yeah. on the on the on the inverse side of that. Um, is this kind of like changing the process for anything? Even re recently, when Belisky had the repo created for like containers, this is not saying that if it's a new container, it has to be a part of a working group. Uh, not a new container. Yeah. If it's a new repository, it has to be part of a working group. This is not directly implying that. It's just saying if it kind of meets enough criteria to where it would be its own its own yeah. project or investigation, then it should be a working group. Because I, mean, so, I like the reference types is a useful one. Like we're not looking like when we did artifacts, that would be a great example. Like should it be a separate repo or should it be part of distribution? We wound up saying it's a separate repo, a separate project. That's fine. We can talk about whether we want to merge those eventually or not. But in this case, the reference types as a just one of many test cases, the goal is not to create yet another project. The goal would be to merge it within one. Now there's a stage to that. And whether that's a branch or a repo, it feels like a repo would be too much in this case, but I'm open to guidance. The, the idea is this was to be an extension to one of the existing uh, projects that are there, not yet another project. Uh, my feeling would be you create a working group or something to discuss that work in a separate repo and then have the respective owners of the project or you know area you want to merge in vote upon that. Because I think you need like a little sandbox to actually get some work done in some official capacity uh, and then sell people um, uh, on it. Or you could just try to do it upfront. But I think like if you, if what you're working on is not fully fleshed out and, and needs input, then I think you need to have your own space versus doing it like maybe in a PR or a branch. Uh, in, in a project, but I, yeah. I was going to so say a something. Project I, I, I think. Fork potentially, like a, a temporary staging of a fork, or so. I think I, I understand what you're going to do with the sandbox. I was trying yeah. to figure out the practical. Yeah, so I, I think this is where it's good to remember, like why we're we're kind of discussing this whole idea is that you know it, <clears throat> it may be that that some new way of using images or or you know, so some new idea around distribution, the end result could just be a PR with like, you know, 10 lines of change. The, the whole reason we're having this working group conversation is that we've had a bunch of those PRs and not, well, there's multiple reasons why nothing happened, but part of it's that, you know, it's not just the change, it, it's what, you know, what, what's the broader picture of what, what we're trying to accomplish. And I think, you know, for Steve, it's signing, you know, NB2 ha has this whole community off, off working on it, but some of some of the direction they're heading requires changes, you know, or, or proposes a change to the spec. So I see the working group as a place to, to continue making progress, even suggesting that that change is, is valuable and having a few registries and vendors try it out and, and implement it. And I think what we're saying is, is, once all that is at the culmination of everybody in the working group agrees, we have some implementations, we're testing it out, we have usage, you know, then you come back to the TOB and say, we're all in agreement, here's the proposal. And, and one piece of that is this PR now that, that revs, you know, image spec or something else. So uh, I, I, I believe that's kind of why we're here is that we want we want there to be that sandbox idea to go make progress without having to convince image spec to do this one thing that this is all I need. And then I'm off and running uh, because we don't, we don't really want piecemeal spec changes that are, you know, backed by the broader vision of like, what are we actually trying to accomplish? And is this the right path? And is there agreement? And so the working group is a chance to go get the, the answers to those questions. In my opinion, so, that's kind of why we're here. Yeah, no, I, so I agree. I agree with the idea, and I agree with having a working group style thing. I've, I I mentioned this ages ago that it would be nice to have something like this. The only reason I'm asking about whether this will always be a new project or whether it be merged into an existing project um, is because then the obvious question is: is if we are going to have changes uh, by TOB approval being merged into projects, then what is the role of the maintainers of that project? I know with the image spec, this is a bit of a <laughs> contentious thing, but like. It would be, I think that that should be at least clarified because as it reads right now, it reads as though TOB votes and it immediately is like, that's as if the maintainers voted on it. 
Um, and to like to be fair, you only need two maintainers to vote. So it's not like it's a it's a huge breach of things. But um, having that written down or some sort of agreement on that would be good. Yeah, I would write it down that if it's going to be merged to another existing project, the TOB and maybe the project have to sign off. If it's just into like a new project, maybe it's some kind of new utility, then it's the TOB just has to sign off on that. That's to me the the logical. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think in, in this case, like the if you're planning on making changes to the image spec, then image spec maintainers or image spec contributors are involved in your working group. Yeah. And like that's I would expect that as well. What, yeah. Yeah. That's what the TOB is reviewing with the like proposal in the first place. It's mm -hmm. if it's just a group, a completely outside group who isn't really involved in image spec trying to push some changes into image spec, then it doesn't it doesn't make sense. When we, we say like there's different companies and projects involved, like the the owners should represent like the the real stakeholders here and the implementation. So I, th I think that's mm -hmm. just a matter of like how we set uh, up the working group in the first place. Could we formalize that, you know, so, a working group has to have an owner for an existing, like if, if a working group is working on an existing spec that one of the owners of the working group has to be a maintainer of the specification. That seems, I mean, it, at least, at least heavily involved or whatnot. Um, That's, that's kind of yeah it has that that still and um one other question i have around this but making sure that at least it's almost like a sponsor or whatever like <laughs> are you there and he's gone and he's gone no, we, i mean he gone. was talking about yeah. being able to have well, like a sponsor okay thanks for your bets are you back that, that language is in there because that's that that word sponsoring is kind of what I was thinking, right? Yeah. But like a list of projects or organizations sponsoring the working group, I would expect the image, like in that case, the image spec would be one of those sponsors. Yeah, I think, I think that's okay. Like there's part of me that you may want to just allow for natural like innovation that may be a little bit com combative. So just a TOB signs off initially. And, and if you're working with the image spec folks that's that's kind of done for the working group over time until until you get to that point where like hey we want to potentially do this or merge this in that's when the interaction happens but i i don't know it's 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 up to you i don't i don't think you know it, it's a major issue to have in the also the maintainer sign off but i could see like if you're trying to like redo everything maybe the image spec maintainers would be like nope we don't want to support this v2 effort right right well and then that that, that actually was my next part of the question is say that there is something and i'm not yep. making an example of Im the v image spec v2 because there's a lot that i, I like and want to see about it the, but if there was a thing it's like this big extension to an existing spec with maintainers and then it ultimately is like rejected like no we're not going to do that or whatever mm -hmm. then all the people that were involved in that working group effectively you know have to decide to abandon it or effectively fork and become its own thing that is no longer sponsored under OCI. And if there's any kind of guidance or at least understanding around what that process would be like. Or the TOC decides to promote the project as its own thing, right? It wouldn't be part of image spec, it would be new image spec. I think, I think like the TOB gets the authority at the end of the day what to do with that particular working group, right? If the image spec okay. maintainers don't want to, okay. Mer well, that, that's, I'm just I'm just trying to think through that that, that case also that you know, yep. you know that, that things could go two two ways there, and it, it still has a at least an yep. expected path of what would happen. And I imagine we would have a joint sitting or something like that before that happens anyway. Uh, so I imagine there's like yeah, several sure. levels of things, yeah. I would get an email and we would have a meeting. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. But yeah, but I agree that, yeah, in, in general, they would be, you would have image rate maintainers or maintainers of the spec that's going to be modified in the working group. I guess uh, I, I would like it to at least just be written down that you would have this, the actual maintainer, if it is merging into a project, to have it written down. Um, <laughs> Which I think it'll be like a rubber stamp thing in most cases, but just mm -hmm. just having it written down would be a good thing. Correct. Duly noted.
So I, I will work with um, LF Legal to kind of get some draft jump updates to you, hopefully in, so let's go do it two weeks because I have KubeCon next week. Um, and then we'll uh, follow up on that and hopefully it would just be a simple TOB approval to make those changes. The other thing that would be useful is uh, just like a, 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 I guess we already have like a, a draft working group already, I think proposed, if, if I recall. Steve, you have something or I'm trying to remember who, I thought I looked at something. Well, Derek uh, proposed the working group structure that I think we're talking about. And then okay. I took that as an example. It's like, all right, if we're doing reference types, here's okay. how Perfect. I would take that proposal and, and design yeah. it. And I don't know if I got the right categories because I think the sponsor actually was, uh, if I'm hearing, I misinterpreted yeah. the sponsor part. Yeah, so we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, I just wanted a sample to kind of run by, by legal of how this would actually work just to ensure they, they understand. And I'm happy to tweet that I was trying to get some feedback. I think, like I said, I think I got the sponsor wrong. Um, if you, you know, Derek and okay. Phil, if you well, want to tell me Phil. how what I should have been filling out in the section, I can update that before you cool. send it up to legal. We don't have like a template. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think, it, I think it, we can wait on that. Yeah, it'll be created, uh, and then we'll have the process of the TOB signing off and, and so on. So just give us a little bit of time on that. But that's a great example to kind of work through, and you know, we'll probably do. Uh, you know, PR is probably PR to some directory for things, but we'll, we, we could work through that. That's like the lo like logistics for us to, to figure out. Cool. So, so I will follow up in two weeks on, on this particular topic. Um, I have about 10 minutes before I need to, to jump on. So I, I wanted to have a little bit uh, or jump off to, to talk a little bit about the inactive maintainer um you know yeah issue. i was just about to do a time check at 30 minutes we yeah, have, have to, it looks like kind yeah. of two more topics to go so if you'll touch on that real quick yeah that one's a quick one because i have to drop in like 10 minutes um so you know we, amy and i did a, a lovely audit of everything that we kind of posted out and you know honestly i think most of the specs are are generally okay it, it, it's image spec obviously that i think is the one that you have some maintainers that just like who knows where they, they like they don't respond to emails like multiple emails pings on github uh so i truly don't know what's going on i think we'll be removing uh i'm going to be doing a pr to remove to propose removing two of them that the existing image spec maintainers need to sign off on essentially right and once that's done um i think uh it will unblock what is the other what is the lgtm two thirds lgtm quote and it's still two, two thirds. It's quite, yeah, two thirds for everything. The awkward thing will be if we don't meet that threshold, but I don't think that will be an issue because I think it's just, it's plain knowledge that these folks are just, they've disappeared uh, essentially or have found something else, uh, you know, to do. I was really lenient on like how long I gave folks as far as like, you could be inactive for years. Well, but... no, just like responding to email now. Sometimes people just aren't, aren't around and you email them and like, hey, you know, oh yeah, I've, I don't know, I've been like, goat farming or something, right? And like, you know, I'll get back to it and respond to things, but literally just like not getting a response. Uh, John, I've known for years, I think he moved to Australia or something and is chilling out there. I'm not sure what's um, uh, up, up with the other 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 um, person. So, uh, but no email responses to me is a strong signal and we're slow rolling this too. So it's not like an immediate thing. We'll have the vote and so on. And if they want to object, they can, but I, I think it's just obvious they're, they're, they're no longer around. Uh, um, Xie Young is also, I think he's based in Beijing, so maybe he doesn't even use his Gmail anymore. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been trying to track, like, I was using my China team, like, can you help me out here? Um, you know, I'm happy, I'm on WeChat, but, like, no, no response. Uh, and I went through his employer, because I think he was in Huawei at, at the time, so uh, still nothing, so. Yeah, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I used to, yeah. I used to talk to yeah, him same here. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, that's a straightforward thing. It just makes it, you know, we've had some votes already uh, on, on, on that. So you, you clearly the other folks are very active. Um, so, so that to me is what I plan to do over the next uh, 24 hours to do basically a, a PR and having uh, the image spec maintainers vote. And that should unblock uh, a lot of other stuff, new maintainers. And so on. I still think the image spec group as a whole needs to decide who else they want to potentially uh, add. We've had a lot of volunteers, at least, that you know come from different registries or different tools. Uh, I just think you have to decide as a group how you um, want to treat those. I'm I'm curious here yep. whether there's an opinion on whether, if you couldn't get the votes, whether the TOB even has the authority to 
change containers of a spec. They, they do because they could update the charter to allow them essentially to, you know, maybe do something that allows them to kind of work around the existing rules. So um, it, it, it's like the TOB controls the overall charter, which controls kind of everything else. But like it, from a rule-based system, generally the TOB won't, won't make, I think we should have like language in there around like, you know, the TOB may have the rights to like remove an in inactive maintainer just for like this type of situation. But the TOB at the end of the day, it just takes a two thirds <clears throat> vote on the TOB to modify the whole charter. So if no one's Seeing opposed- nobody on mute. Um, nobody, yeah. nobody seems to have like strong opinions about this. <laughs> Yeah. Too inactive. Strong what, opinions what, about him opening a PR. No, you, uh, I think I think that's I think that's a reasonable yeah. thing to do. Okay. Uh, well, also reminds me like we should have like an emeritus status too for the organization, which is also common for a lot of these things. I think just recognizing people for their previous effort and so on, I think is is, is a good thing. So I, I will make sure that's done also. <laughs> Would we put that in the org repo? Would we put uh, that in yeah, the org repo? I'll probably put it in. The yeah, org, I think makes sense uh, in, in one place or each spec could have its emeritus uh, markdown file type. It, I'll figure something out, but I do think it's overdue that we should recognize uh, folks from their contributions previously. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah that seems good. Um, so how does that affect, so there's three, I was just looking, there's three sort of PR votes ongoing. I, I, once they're removed, I will remove them from the vote and then just treat it as a vote. I don't think that you have to kick, re kickstart a vote for people that were removed. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I was going to spend the next week typing LGTM into comment boxes, and that, that's not really fun. <laughs> no, yeah, no it, it'll be fine. So I think it should be a fairly quick vote for the inactive folks, and then we could go update the existing votes, which I think you know, it'll be easy to pass, I think, at, at that point, um, last time I checked. Uh, any other questions on that? That was my last kind of thing, uh, just, to, just to unblock. And I feel that, like, you know, there's the other specs that, you know, potentially you could argue there's a couple inactive folks, but they generally have not had, like, the blockage we've seen on, uh, on, on image spec. But um, I think I could work on those over time. We've had some volunteers on the run C side, too, that want to Chipping and so on, but uh, that project's also in, in decent shape as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we added a couple of maintainers to run C um, yeah. a while ago, and that's been a, yeah. lo a lot of stuff has started happening since then. So, yeah, cool. I, think, I think we're all right, but yeah, but if people are volunteering, yep. then we can definitely look, look about. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's it for my end. Oh, there's a bunch of there's a fuzzing report that I think I shared uh, that you should have, Alexa. Yes, which yes. I don't know. Um, if I need to take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think it's going to cause any CVs to come up, but I would take a look um, at it because I'll need to sign off from both run C maintainers and uh, OMG maintainers on, so, so on that one. Twice. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. All right. I'll take a look at that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, just one thing I wanted to say before you jump off is, is regarding the, um, the draft versions of the charter thing. I think yeah. the working group stuff should probably just be done normally and then we can do the draft stuff later. Since it's yeah. obviously there's already a working group that's already being planned out, so we probably should get that done as soon as possible. So yeah, we can do yeah. the other charter changes later. I, I yeah, and I'm gonna have our lawyers look at you. You had a bunch of like issues open and stuff like that, and they'll basically reply like, but we'll do that after. Like I want the working group yep. stuff done now because those that's essentially blocking some honest honest progress. And the inactive maintainer is shown image spec. To me, that's like the two core things that we should kind of get done in the in the coming weeks so we can unblock a, a lot of good work. Yeah, agree. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, no worries. And, and we do have budget for a bounty hunter, Josh. That, but uh, I don't think we need to do it in this case. Just a, a humble email yeah. should should work for, for folks. And, and hopefully, yeah. uh, on, on that note, that was yeah. not related to this call, but yep. um, in the budget, hopefully, uh, KubeCon LA, we could have a face-to-face Correct. I'm already planning a face-to-face -face option for for KubeCon LA too, so there'll be a uh, you know a room available for for folks um, on the TOB and on the maintainer side and whatever external people you have. I'll let you know probably in a month and a half a little bit more of the details because the space 
essentially the how much space we have changes based on you know which percentage of people we could fit in a room like right now i think it's like 25 percent. so you have a room of 100 you can only fit 25 which is sucks but the rules are changing uh, over time cool so yeah I'll, we'll follow up on that one um i will follow up hopefully in two weeks on both the charter changes and uh, i'll kick off the inactive maintainer things uh tomorrow cool Cool. All right. But you keep meeting. Sounds good. Uh, Amy's, Amy's here. Here. So, all is well. Right. All right. Get cool. Out. Take care, all. Out. All right. So, uh, so that checks off working group proposal and inactive maintainer actions. Uh, Steve, as, as you noted early in the call, the reference type proposal was not really, I mean, it, it's, we have some time. So people have, want to look at that and discuss. It wasn't really meant for voting or discussion or anything other than as a example of trying to follow through on the idea. Um, and then the other thing I'd put on here was charter cleanup, but it sounds like Alexa, sounds like Chris will have, uh, well, we'll stage this. Working group will come, come through and then uh, LF Legal can respond to your issues on the charter, unless there's anything specific we should discuss. Um, so what would be nice is I, I think we probably, given I don't think everyone has, has read through the the exact changes or like the outline of the changes, it would be nice if folks would just take a quick look. I actually made like a explanatory comment that is like fairly long, or not that long, but like longish, um, that explains what each of the points are that I want to have fixed that I, I see as issues that need to be fixed. And it would be nice if folks would comment on those because while that would not be like legal changes, it would be good to have like other people in the TUB approve that I that they agree that there's actually a problem that we need to fix. Um, and there's like sort of basic stuff like um, charter versions, but there's also more complicated things like um, the way that voting is is defined is not actually like consistent. And there's a couple other things that at least people having agreement that, that actually is a problem would be would be good before we actually get legal to to start rewriting what is the about. actual tdc yes that is also one of the things that i that i ended up rewriting because the, the wording on that was quite um questionable and actually there was a there was a there was a not a typo but they the wrong word was used in one section which technically makes the tdc not active but as a different topic so anyway, the, the, all these things are probably stuff that should be um just quick just quick look at overview and, and comment on the stuff that you disagree with and you're referring to the stuff that's both PRs and issues. Is there basically you have stuff? Uh, so in the so in the actual and... PR, there is a there is a comment which has like a which is um, I, I'll just link the the directly link the comment. But there's a there's a comment where I, I put like a full on explanation of um, yeah I of think, each of the bits. I think that's the opening comment to, to poll eighty six. Yeah, yeah, you you linked it. Um, so yeah, that has all the specific. Uh, feedback. So yeah, if you're a TOB, TOB member, I guess it'd be good to, you know, before before Chris passes this along to legal, see if we agree or, or have any issues with the suggestions from Alexa. So yeah, this is good. Yeah, it's all for me for the charter side. So, yep, thanks. So, it, from the charter, I I agree. Like, yeah, we should get the the versioning stuff in, like first, especially we don't know like the ordering of what we're going to get in. Um, the the second thing, which is, I was that's kind of what I was getting at when when I was asking about like what authority does the TOB have? Is is the TOB really like a governing body? Like stuff like a vote of no confidence is it makes sense if like really we're just a uh, a technical board sitting under the linux foundation and the linux foundation is really the governing body here i mean technically yeah but also the charter defines the scope of projects and defines like the way it's written it's written as though we're like delegating authority to projects to do what they want but that sort of implies that it is our authority to be delegating it. That's how I read it, at least. Um, but yeah, the voter no confidence thing was more that was I, I added it because I I thought it should be we should at least have a discussion about it. But I I mean, you're right that it's it's not like an ordinary governing body where it would be a more obvious thing to have. Um, yeah. 
yeah like if we if if the tob was like blocking passage of stuff that was needed by projects or something then yeah something like a no confidence would be actually already necessary, in here but... um i've got the trade the trader up in front of me um it's under i mean uh item 4g any issues that can't be resolved by the trademark board can be prescribed preferred over to Linux Foundation for resolution. But I think on this point, I'm actually going to wait for the real lawyers to be able to come and weigh in on some of this, because there may be more nuances as far as like what we're changing with the working groups that may come back and require us to amend the charter. But I'm going to wait for them to say. I'll even like yeah. copy the piece over here that I'm looking at that I think tells me um, what I what I think you're asking for. Which in the trade, and that's even further, like the trademark board of OCI is slightly different than the TO, the technical board, Correct. because the trademark were the people that, you know, have more IP and otherwise assignment like members, mm -hmm. you know, what is a member, quote unquote, of this versus just a technical maintainer, the people that ponied up money. Uh, I wanted to say this is actually one of the, this was the mistake I was referring to. If you look at section M of, uh, subsection M of section six, um, it says the intention is for the TOB to operate by consensus. However, if consensus cannot be reached, the trademark board shall vote on a decision. I imagine this is actually a, a mistake because the because the, the text is copied from section five, but the trademark board is still used. So like technically, the way it reads right now is that if we can't agree on something, then the trademark board are the people who vote on it, which I don't think is correct. Um, that might yeah, actually be right as far as like what's been written down in here simply because like it goes to uh look at um so you do n then if we can't be resolved by the trademark board then o o tells you what your next escalation path is in here huh. yes but i'm saying that um uh the way it's written right now is that like the it's like in this one paragraph it, 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 only refer, it only refers to trademark board once when it's talking about the TOB votes and TOB meetings and TOB operating by consensus. Right, but like that's the because text you define the trademark copy. board further up. Like, so trademark board lives in item number four. Um, technical development community is number five, the number six. And because you've already defined the, the trademark board up in four, you're like, okay, I'm referring back to that. If that doesn't work, then it goes on to the Linux Foundation. But I also could totally see that you want a clarity on this one. So if you can please mark that as sort of like the how should this be working and we can have the lawyers look at it. Yeah, yeah I listed that as one of the things. In okay. The, um, yeah. I'm sure you did. It's more like the, yes, now that I see this, I can see why this is confusing about like, how does this path work anyways? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, I, I have nothing else to talk about with the, with the charter, so. Um... Sure. <laughs> and everybody loves like, you know, spending time like wandering through charters, yes. No. Let's wait for the lawyers to be able to come back and give us like like sane and reasonable wording, and then we'll be able to look at it more, more coherently. Yeah. So. I have nothing else as well. Just just point of clarity. So is it we're just focusing on eighty six, or do we want to focus on you know over time the three PRs? And so you have issues labeled charter as well. So so I'm just trying to figure out which ones you want to. Yeah. So, so the the charter issues. So I made the charter issues before I made the PRs. So the charter issues are all fixed by the one big PR I have. The okay. second PR I made is is just the first commit. So as as we discussed some time ago, um, having just the versioning stuff in first would be nice, so that we can then do each of the things iteratively. So the, the two PRs I have open, one of them is like a strict subset of the other one. So it's the charter section twelve C formalized charter charter versions. In, Formalized charter versions and change log. That's just the first commit of the big PR. Um, so it's, uh, but like for right now, I would look at 86 and then there is like a, a summary like drop down, which has the explanatory mem memorandum, which explains each of the things that I went through and the, the, the reasoning for why I believe it should be changed or what the thing I think that should be changed is. And so a review on that would be, would be brilliant. Thanks. Steve, if I can characterize this, uh... The reason that everything's in a big PR is because it's hard to vote on things piecemeal because the yep. charter revision process is difficult. But the first, the first commit that establishes the versioning thing makes it so that it is easier to contribute piecemeal. 
and we can vote on a revision that's complete after we've done all of the individual parts of it. So you're looking and all this comes with the caveat that there will be legal review, obviously. Sorry, so so you're looking for 97 first is the idea. Um. So. So. Uh, so yeah, we will do so. 97 will be done first. However, because we're going to do this after the working group change, at least that was that was I believe what we agreed on. So yeah, since we're going to do this after the working group change, for now it would be nice to just have a high level review of um, 86. Because 86 has like the full description of all the things I would like to get done now, and we're not going to merge all this now. It's just so that so we can start the discussion, get the discussion going on all those points to make sure that actually there is consensus on those things, or if there isn't, we can hash it out um, before we start sending stuff to legal to ask for for proper legalese for for things. Yeah, I, th I think effectively uh, exactly what Alexa just said, but the the summary is that we're you know, our LGTMs are not necessarily going to matter as as much as the fact that it'd be good to know that we're all have general consensus before Chris tees up the lawyers to say, you know, yay, nay, on kind of the suggested changes. So, so basically read Alexa's summary. If you have questions, let's get them out of the table because after Chris comes back with the working group draft, then we'll sort of attack these updates following following that yeah if you want i can i can put these in like a hack md or i can put them into separate issues or something like that if that would make um life easier for you i'm fine i just wanted to know what the process you want to follow so okay yeah i wasn't asking for anything change just looking for the focus okay cool no reason to pull up the hour if we don't need to yeah, if, if everyone's good, I think we've we've covered our topics, um, and we no. will wait. Yeah. Do you want to establish a meeting cadence, or is that mean? Uh, I don't think it's needed just yet. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we'll we'll see what what's left on the table when Chris comes back. Um, you know, I I think because we have some tons of pain across this group, I you know as much as we can handle things and issues and PRs, then we come together for votes. Uh, probably be the easiest thing. The only reason that I bring it up is when I last brought this one up was like the, it looks like there was a June call. Um, uh, yeah, that was last year. Yeah, and, and then we haven't <laughs> met since. So I'm, I'm tempted to be able to just say, put one on the calendar for like, possibly like the end of May to make sure that we have one. <coughs> Uh, next year, right? No. Yes, next year, mate. <laughs> yeah, you mean next year? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't. Been... I don't think the TOB convened once in four or five years. So. Yeah, we're doing uh, better than we. Used to. Okay, I appreciate yeah. you slowing my roll. At the same time, it sounds like there's enough on the table to be able to make sure that we have like something yeah. out there. Um, so I can take my complaints offline. Given, given, given that you know, Chris has something to follow up on in two okay. weeks, and then you know, imagine that we will have something possibly to chat about it like Phil's saying it it could just be asynchronous okay. um but otherwise we'll just do another doodle or whatever it should be fun yeah i don't think we need recurring meetings for this one it's just a question of it was it was really a housekeeping meeting. question and i realized i was being the bad person by bringing up like the possibility of more meetings so <laughs> i yeah just don't change the passcode yeah, i hope not oh my gosh i'll never know how to be able to find it either okay Cool. Well, thanks, thanks everybody. Um, we'll we'll connect and uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it will be a year before we make progress on the charter. So we'll, uh, we'll do better this year. You say that, but like you know, <laughs> don't limit yourself. <laughs> All right. Later. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Good to see everyone. Bye all. Thank you. Happy hacking. Bye bye. Bye.